subscribe squad welcome 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 to another episode of help me scribe i believe this is the second episode so if you're on the second episode i appreciate you for checking out the first episode and i'm so excited to continue on with this series um you guys this feedback has been amazing and we've been able to continue to grow together um in life and on this journey as we pursue our dreams remember we're all about tapping into our superpowers that is what we're here to do today tapping into our superpowers so i wanted to title this uh, episode how to be great because i feel like that's what we're all chasing at the end of the day we're all trying to be great in whatever it is that we do personal life business life etc and so I wanted to give you guys my gems or uh, scribes keys. I got the keys, the keys, the keys. Scribes keys to uh, be successful as far as how to be great in life, um, in business, and in general. So if you ask this question, yo, scribe, how am I going to be great at what it is that I do? Uh, the number one answer I can give somebody is consistency. Consistency is key. If you guys check out motivational t tips of the day, I talk about this all the time. Consistency is key. You have to show up for yourself. Every single day you have to show up. Even when you don't want to do it, you have to show up. And a lot of times with our goals, if we're not immediately seeing results, this can be the hardest part to it is uh, continuously showing up, even though it may not be, uh, you know, satisfying um, um, initially. And so I tell people all the time, like, set yourself um, a goal of how long you're going to go for whatever it is that you're doing without results, no results, etc. Now, mind you, set yourself other goals about what results you want to achieve. And I'm not saying don't pay attention to that. But I think initially when you have this really big goal, you have this really big thing that you want to conquer, you set yourself a goal. I use this example of when I first started doing, you know, YouTube videos on a consistent basis, I set myself a goal of, I think it was like four months, five months. I was going to give it my full effort regardless of what was happening for four or five months. And then at the end of uh, that, that four or five months, I was going to evaluate the situation and see if I wanted to continue. While I was in those four or five months, I was just gonna dive in the process of getting the results that I wanted to get. And I feel like that's what's necessary in order to, to tap in on that level. You have to just tap in to the point where it's like, look, it may be dirty, it may be messy, I may not be getting there as fast as I want to, but I am committed to whatever this goal is. It's the same thing with working out. When you work out initially, you don't see a whole lot of results, right? In the first week or something, you know what I'm saying? Some people might, we're not talking about you going to Biggest Loser or something like that. Woo, you cutting up out here. You dropping off hundreds of pounds. That stuff is crazy too, sidebar. It's crazy to me when I think about that. Like, wow, this is life altering. But anyway. For the most part, you say you're going to go to the gym, you're working on your body. Let's say you're trying to tone up or maybe you are trying to lose weight. Initially, you may not see results, but it's through that period of time and that consistent work that you put in that you see the results that you want. You have to commit to that. You have to commit to consistency. You may not have to commit to uh, the pain, <laughs> yeah, but by committing to consistency, you are essentially committing to the struggles, the pain, the obstacles, etc. I think, though, initially, like I said, when you're first starting and when you're first trying to get towards one of these goals, you have to focus on what can keep you motivated and what can keep you, um, you know, pushing forward through everything that you're trying to overcome. And I think committing to consistency is key. In addition to that, I always say this, hustle beats talent when talent doesn't hustle. So look, there might be, not even there might, there's somebody out there that's more talented than you. There's somebody out there right now that is more talented than me. But my hustle and my worth ethic is what takes me over the hump. They may get there first. But when I get there, I'm coming through strong, big dog. And it's going to be undeniable. In addition to that, they may not last because they had the talent, but they didn't have the hustle. And so it required a hustle to maintain that level of greatness that they were on and couldn't do it. We see it all the time, right? Whether it's a, a one-hit wonder or some breakout star when it comes to a movie. Just several situations in life, a, a hit phenomenon. 
And then three months later, we're like, who, what, what happened to such and such? It's because they had the talent or maybe they just had the opportunity and they didn't have the hustle or the work ethic or just the overall um, infrastructure and everything is an infrastructure, right? Whether it's, you know, personal business, whatever, the infrastructure to maintain that level of greatness that they needed to at the time. So there's that. And look, moving on, right? About having that infrastructure. It's all about building habits. And what we want to do is build positive habits in our life. Um, whether it's an addiction, right, that you have, and some people are addicted to whatever it is, like let's say it's a tobacco addi addiction, initially it's going to be hard as hell to break from that addiction, but they say it takes 21 days to build a habit, and I'm in agreement with that, I think the first 21 days um, that you're doing something, if you're doing it on a consistent basis every single day, uh, it'll give you the uh, the platform or the plie rather into being successful with that habit in the long term. I think it, it really kind of takes like three months for me to build a habit to where I'm like broken into it. Right now I'm in this process. Woo, and it's a process. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> of waking up at 5 a.m. Or 5.30. I haven't decided. I'm flirting with this. If it's going to be 5 a.m. or 5.30 every single morning. Now... If you guys know a little bit about my journey, I will be going to the Coast Guard Reserves. And so, um, Coast Guard Boot Camp, they finna wake up butts up. I don't know if y'all seen these YouTube videos, but it gets a little intense, right, big dog? And uh, they sleep deprive you all night. So, I had already kind of been on that um I, that I wanted to start waking up earlier so that when, when I go to boot camp, it's not too much of a shock and my body is just kind of used to it, right? But it was somebody that, you know, I was, I was uh, you know, working with who had encouraged me because uh, he was doing it in his life. And uh, he was uh, building um, his life based off the fact that he woke up at 430 every single morning. And there's a video about uh, Navy SEALs doing it, right? And the reason why they do it. Check it out on YouTube. Just type in Navy SEAL wakes up 430 and it will pop up. And there's this theory behind it. Um, and I think to a certain extent it is true, right? So to a certain extent, it works. It's been hard for me because I'd say usually before I tried this, right, I was waking up at around like mm, seven, eight at the latest to start my day, which is still early for some people. But 5 a.m., bro, that, that's early for everybody, right? And so I, I have so much stuff going on right now in my life. Full-time college student, going to be graduating. Who knows? I might be graduated already by the time you hear, hear this episode. Uh, got the Coast Guard going on. Got my album that's finished drop. Whoop, whoop. Shameless plug. Um, and I have a, a business that I own. I have clients. Just all types of things that I'm working on. Shooting music videos. Lord. And so in order for me to achieve what it is that I need to achieve in uh, my life, I, I need to, to maximize my time. I cannot waste time. Time is a thing that we cannot get back, right? And so I said, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning. And I gave myself a 10-day commitment. And I did it for 10 days straight. And I committed to that. Um, and boy, how my life changed within those 10 days, how much more productive I felt like I was being and how I, you know, got stuff done and, and just furthered everything all around me. Um, and then that 11th day, whoo, my body crashed. <laughs> so I'm on this, I'm on this journey, right. Of trying to see if this is something that I can maintain over a period of time. Can I wake up at 5 a.m.? I think boot camp is really going to kind of drill that into me, but I want to have it before then because this is just something that I want to do. Um, and then also trying to find the balance just because somebody wakes up at 4.30 every, a, uh, every day, Monday, Sunday through Sunday does not mean that that's the right thing for you. So me, I'm trying to see if I can find the balance of maybe Monday through Friday, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. And then Saturday, I'm going to purposely, you know, force myself to sleep. Uh, because you know, some people can do that if they go to bed at nine, but it's like based off of what's going on in my life, I'm a music person. I might not be able to go to bed at night. Like you have to be flexible, but give yourself these challenges, hold yourself accountable to these challenges and try, try to uh, get there. 21 days to build a habit. I personally think that it probably takes like two or three months. We're talking about if it's something big and drastic. 
There's also this dope YouTuber, shout out to him. He goes by the name of Matt uh, Davala or Dahlia. And he like has these challenges that he does for himself every single month. And so I have a YouTube vlog that I made about waking up at 5 a.m. Um, for 10 days. So you guys could check that out. YouTube.com slash ScribeCash. And I just find it to be interesting um, when it comes to how people build habits. And in addition to talking about Matt Dahlia, he has something I really try to apply to my life. And it's called the two-day rule. It's another way that we could make sure that we're maintaining really good habits and trying to stick to our habits. The two-day rule is this. Let's say you have a goal like I'm going to go start going to the gym. You don't skip two days in a row of your goal. So meaning... That it's okay to take a break, you know what I'm saying? Or some stuff happens. This is life, right? Stuff happens. But when uh, you skip one day, you force yourself that next day to get back on it. Get back towards your goal and, and to do it like that. Don't skip two days in a row. And if you do that and you allow yourself to have that kind of like wiggle room, it can really help. Um, because... Like we say, when it comes to working out or just anything like me waking up, a lot of the hard things, it's like, it's just consistency, being consistent with it and uh, not giving it up. And then once it becomes a habit, it's like second nature it's muscle memory. You don't even have to think about it. You just naturally do it. And then while we're in these building the habits, right? Um, I just, I feel like a lot of times we just get stuck in um, the end result of what we want. And there's no, there's no, it's nothing wrong with having that end result in your head, right? It's nothing wrong with that at all. But um, I think you have to forget about that end result. You have to just be in it. You have to just live in in the grind, in the hustle, so so to speak, of doing the everyday work. And I like to think about like um, like NBA players when they're in the summer, right? They're doing so much prepara preparation. That they can't even think about like the whole season. They have to take it one day at a time. What can I do to build my game? Let me just focus on shooting a thousand free throws so I can improve my th free throw percentage and just be so busy in the work that that final result, because we're doing what I talked about in the last episode of forwards thinking and, and backward motion, we know that we're going to get there. The only thing is we have to challenge ourselves to tap in to the process which is a perfect segue because my next gym is this trust the process <laughs> trust the process i'm a basketball fan if you guys can't tell if you're watching me then you see i have the WNBA hoodie on eventually i want to own my own WNBA team it's going to happen i'm postulating that which i'll probably talk about in another episode of postulates and, and affirmations etc I'm going to own a WNBA uh, team in the future, but trust the process. If you hear that phrase and you're a basketball fan, it, it probably reminds you of the 76ers. And so this is like crazy to me. If you, if you think about in business, right? Like it's, it's rare that people want to do this though. And this is this process that I'm trying to describe. It's rare that people will take something that they're working on and just blow the whole thing up and be like, all right, this isn't working. I'm going to have to start all over for scratch. But in basketball, right, if you keep up with the sport, this is not a rare thing. Like organizations, if they feel like they're having losing seasons or whatever, they will blow the whole freaking team up. They will get rid of all the star players, sell them out, sell them away, break the team apart, get rid of the coach, get rid of the GM. But they will blow the whole freaking thing up. And 76ers did this. Uh, this is years back, right? Um, and their whole thing in the NBA, if you're in a small market, 76ers is not necessarily a small market in Philadelphia, but you try to get like a, a top lotto pick in the draft. Because if you can get that lotto pick in the draft, then that attracts other dope players in and fans in to the point where you can rebuild your team. And so when they blew up the 76ers team, right, they started this thing with their new coach that they brought in called Trust the Process. And in that trusting of the process, you had Joel Embiid, who's now this year, it's 2021, is, uh, he's in the talks for being the MVP, right? And at the time... People didn't get it. They were like, what? Why? How are you going to trust the process? You mean to tell me that means we finna lose? 
for three, four seasons? You know how long that is as an NBA fan? That is painful, bro. That's like three, four years. You're going you're gonna to completely lose for three, four years. But they kept saying it, trust the process, trust the process. So what does that mean, right? Trusting the process is knowing that it may appear like you're taking L's, bro. It may appear like you're not getting anywhere at all. But it's like the hair, tortoise in the hair situation. You might not be getting where, anywhere right now, but you're going to get there. And when you get there, whoo, you might be on some MVP level stuff, big dog, because you trusted the process. You put in the work, so now you're getting the results in the long run because you trusted that process regardless of what all the haters said regardless of what all the doubters were talking about in your ear you knew that you were going to get your goal because you trust the process that you put in and so that's what being great is really about and so let's say we use all these keys that i'm talking about right so let me go back through it we talk about consistency 21 days to build the habit uh two-day rule uh, forget the results, doing the work, right? Then the other part, and trusting the process, meaning that you're in this process, you're fully dedicated to this process, you're doing the work, you're showing up for yourself. Every single day, you're showing up for yourself and you're going, right? Because you trust that process. The next thing, right? The boot to top it all off, right? Is about this. Stop comparing yourself to everyone else's journey. And this is part of trusting the process. Stop comparing yourself to everyone's journey. And in this day and age, we got like, you know, social media. It's so easy to fall in love with the idea of somebody. People really be making themselves look hella popping, bro. They make it look like the grass is not just greener on the other side. The grass is, is gold. It's got the Midas touch on the other side. And so that's the trap you don't want to fall into is looking at what other people have right looking at what other people have and looking at where they are at in their life and and their story and their journey and then putting that on yourself i do believe that social media is a great tool in, in youtube and facebook to inspire yourself but there's a difference between in looking at somebody and say yo that's dope i want to work and do that i want to do that for myself and to and and then looking at somebody and saying yo why don't i have that like, or why does that person have that and I don't have that? What's up with them? And why, I, like, that's a difference between comparing yourself and being inspired by somebody. We should not be comparing ourselves because that person's journey is that person's journey. What God has for you, what's for you, it is for you. And there's nothing that nobody can do to take it away. It is all on you, big dog, and what it is that you want to do in your life and how you're going to go about getting your goals and your dreams and your ambitions. That person's journey is that person's journey. Not only that, in this day and age of social media, they might be lying. Like they might, it might be all one big show. And so you're just this viewer, this audience who's, who's stuck on that, that never ending loop of watching somebody else's show and you so busy watching somebody else's money, you not making your own. And that to me is illogical. And that's, that's, that's real talk. That's illogical. Stop comparing yourself to somebody else. And because you, you're not going to compare yourself to somebody else, somebody's journey, then what leads to that is that you have confidence in yourself. You know exactly who you are. You know what you bring to the table. You know where you're going to go and where you're headed in life. And you believe it through and through. And there's nothing that anybody can tell you to deter you from what it is that you want, what you're going to go get, and what you're freaking capable of. You have to be confident in yourself. And I'll probably end up making a whole nother episode about being confident in yourself and, and you know, just knowing who you are in life and when you know who you are and when you know who your what your purpose is and you know where you're going it makes things so much easier and so much clearer and so i say all these things because that's that's really what being great is is to have that combination of consistency and confidence and at the same time we got to keep it all the way 99 plus one so how you keep it 99 plus one with yourself is there's a difference between it's not working yet and it's not working right like it's not working yet is all right i didn't put in results about two months you know what i'm saying or i put in work for about two months and i'm not seeing the results yet that i would like to see right there's that it's not working is 
I look, I'm losing money. I'm I'm really not getting any value in what it is that I'm doing. I don't see myself making any type of progress whatsoever. I've overcome obstacles and I'm still not getting where. Then in order to be great, you have to be like, ooh, it's time to pivot. Uh, you have to be flexible flexible in, in the sense of you have to be willing to adjust so that you can still get on track for your goal or you can make a new goal. And that's a-okay. It's a-okay to have a goal that you thought that was going to work out and it didn't because maybe you put in the work for that to prepare you for what it is that you're actually supposed to be doing. And so this is why I always say I, I don't take L's. I really don't take L's. I learn lessons and I get blessings. And in every lesson, there's a blessing. I know that's the bar. You know what I'm saying? That's rapper me. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> And that's the truth, though, because everything is setting me up for something else. Everything is teaching me something else. So when I know that I can never I can never like, you know, feel bad about my decisions. I can never second guess or, or dwell on some things that don't work out the way that I thought it, especially because I have good intentions on everything In everything that I approach. I have good intentions. So I don't feel any type of way if things don't work out the way that I wanted it to work out I always try and I always strive and I always work towards that but if it doesn't it's okay it's time to pivot it's time to go to something else and then something else and to something else you have to know when it's time to pivot and don't be pivoting too soon like you can't just be quitting things but you know this is not working out you know you 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 was trying to be a chef and look you just magically you just can't figure it out you just burn all your food and and it's nasty <laughs> you know you wanted to be a gardener and every time you touch a plant it dies for the past two years and even though you didn't went to gardening school you didn't have gardening training you didn't try it all bro and it's just it's not it it's just not working you have to pivot it's okay Maybe you're not supposed to be a gardener. Maybe you're supposed to have a gardening company or supply the plants so somebody else can be a gardener. That part, like, it, it's just about perspective, changing your perspective and, and keeping your confidence. And when you're confident in yourself and you know what you are, you know what you're capable of and you know what your purpose is, it's not that big of a deal to pivot. And so I hope that these tips, these gems that I've given you for today, is going to allow you to continue to tap into your superpowers because that's what this show is all about, tapping into your superpowers. Today's specific show was about how to be great, and the next show will be another branch, an olive branch of, of tapping into superpowers. And again, we'll have some guests coming up here in episodes uh, in the future. So be sure to stay tapped in. Uh, comment, um, DM me on if like follow me let me know what you want me to talk about ask any questions and uh specific questions and i'll start answering some uh fan questions i appreciate you guys so much remember every sunday 1 p.m pacific standard time if you're watching the video be right here on youtube facebook instagram if uh you're listening to the audio it's going to be on your specific podcast platform i love you all i will see you next time deuces